Good afternoon. Welcome po sa ating online Bible study. And again, ito pong inyong lingkod, Ronnie Cariaga. So, let's go over. Ang online Bible study natin is a place wherein we could review and we could refresh things that we know. Why we believe what we believe. And basically, ito siya na online Bible study ay para sa malaman natin how we got the Bible and reading the Bible for all it's worth. That will be the prevailing or the pervading principle of this online Bible study. So we will start from the basics and then we move from there. Ulitin ko, ako po si Jose Roniboy Perez Cariaga. Okay? So, let's lay down the foundation of this online Bible study. Sa ating online Bible study, ang groundwork po natin is that we all agree that we all believe in God and that we all know God and that we can know who God is. Okay? So, kailangan din na masama doon that we are God's creation. Okay? So, sa pag-aaral natin in this study, as we move on, as we continue on, there will be times that maybe you will disagree with what I am saying or um, you will disagree with what is being presented. So, let us agree to disagree on that. Maybe coming from different backgrounds and different uh, ideas, yun muna ang naabot mo o yun ang naabot ko. Okay? So, when times like this, Let's not take these things personal. And let us not consider this to be an attack on your faith or an attack on your religion. So let's all consider all things dito being a Bible study and in an online setting. Let's all take everything as a learning process for all of us, for you, my viewers, and for me being the presenter. Okay? So when that time comes that disagreements arise. So, let's all consider natin lagi ito. The word, the thing that we are studying, the Holy Bible, is inerrant. Hindi po ito nagkakamali. But, our opinions are, opinion ko, opinion mo, opinion ni duman. Even, yung mga sinasabi natin na Bible scholars. Okay? Nagdi-differ po doon. Opinions are not inerrant. The word is inerrant. Okay? So, let us review on the last lesson. Lesson number one is about the Holy Bible. So, we studied last week that the etymology or ang pinanggalingan ng salitang Bible, it came from the Greek word Biblos. This is the singular form. At ang kanyang plural form is Biblia. Okay? So, taking that, Biblos meaning book and then Biblia meaning books, Gamit natin sa Tagalog, Ilocano, Bisaya, Biblia talaga yan eh. So, the Bible literally means book of books or it is a collection or compilation of books. And, ibang term natin doon, it is a portable library. Ang Bible natin is a library in itself because there are a lot of books there. Okay? So, when we look at it, kung kaya nating ilagay sana sa isang chart na ganito, this is our Bible. This is the Bible library. Itong nilalaman ng Bible natin. Okay? So, let's move on. The Bible in itself is divided into two. Itong one, two, that's the Old Testament, and the second one is the New Testament. The Old Testament being or having 39 books, and then the New Testament having 27 books, at ang total po niyan ay 66 books. Some others have their Bibles na sinasabi ng 72 books. Pa, paano nangyari yon? Ganito po nangyari doon. Ang una kasi, ang tanggap natin na 66 books, yun yung unang pumasa sa canon. Canon being yung rule or yung measure or measuring stick saying this one is. Yan. May mga, may mga nakaset sila na stick na nagsasabing ano bang magkwa-qualify na matatawag na masasama natin doon sa Bible. The others are yung we all believe na 321 Council of Nicaea na nabuo yung Bible natin. Pero hindi eh. Uh, hindi pa buong buo on 321. So, 
I look it up and it says the Council of Hippo in 8393 and the Council of Carthage in 397 affirm that the 27 books the New Testament are indeed authoritative at yun ang 27 books lang na isinama sa New Testament. So, what about the apocryphal books? Yung iba na nandadagdag dito sa ating 72 books. There are 6, 12 actually yan, pero anim ang pinayagan, anim ang isinama. Kaya nga mapapansin niyo yung mga apocryphal books, may tinatawag tayo doon mga Deutero-Kanoniko. Meaning, Deo, second. So, sa second canon na pumasa, hindi sa first canon. Be that as it may, for the time of our study, let's just stick with this that we have, the 66. So, the division of Old Testament, as you could see at the division of the Old Testament, we have the five low books, books of Moses, which is in Hebrew considered to be Torah. We've got the 12 historical books, natin. and then we have the wisdom books or the books of poetry. Limang aklat po yan. Uh, and then, we have the 17 prophecy books or sa ibang bagay, itong prophecy books na to, considered na dalawa. Composed of the major prophets from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Major in the sense na mas makakapal yung mga aklat na sinulat nila or yung mga prophecies that they deal with. Yung mga remaining doon, yung 13, ay minor prophets. Minor in the sense na mas kukunti yung sinulat nila. Okay? So, all in all, sa Hebrew, ang tawag nila doon is the Tanakh or an acronym for the Torah, the Nevim, and the Kitovim. The Nevim being the prophets and the Kitovim being the writings. Okay? So, let's move on. Sa bagong tipan naman, mayroon din siyang divisions. At ang kanyang divisions ay yung Gaspos na tinatawag. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then we have the history book or the Acts of the Apostles. And then we have the letters to the Christians. Sa letters to the Christians, ang 13 doon or 14, ang iniisip ng iba, ay Pauline Epistles. Start ka ng Romans. 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon. Hanggang doon lang tayo sa 13. Marami nagsasabing si Paul doon sumulat ng Hebrews pero hindi ganon ka-decisive. Hindi ganon ka-sigurado. So, let's leave it at that. And the next one, Hebrews, James, 1st Peter, 2nd Peter, 1st John, 3rd John, hanggang Jude, yun naman ang tinatawag natin general epistles. And the last, pero hindi least sa lahat-lahat ng mga aklat natin sa bagong tipan is the book of prophecy or the revelation or apocalypse kung tawagin. Okay? Now, that being said, makikita natin that there were 35 to 40 writers, different writers ng ating Biblia, both the Old and the New Testament. They were ordinary men. Some of them are kings or noble men, farmers, fishermen, shepherd, doctor, si Lucas po ang doktor, lawyer or scribe, uh, many believe na lawyer si Paul, be that as it may, and then ambassador of the emperor, okay, si Nehemiah, or si Haggai, we can use that. They were written in three different continents, that is Asia, Africa, and that of Europe. So ito yung pinanggalingan papano nagawa ang Biblia po natin, okay? And in all, it covers a period of 1,500 years. Covering na thinking that the Torah was written mga around 1440 BC, and then natapos ang the book of Revelation, siguro around 95 to 99 AD. So it covers napakahabang panahon, 1,500 years. Ang mga writers, different writers, some of them were contemporaries, and some of them didn't see each other kagaya ng mga nasa old at saka sa new, hindi po nagpang-abot ang mga yan. Okay? Isang bagay na napag-aralan natin last time ay mayroon tayong mga tinatawag na Bible biases. May mga nagsasabing one version is preferred over the other. And one version is sinasabi nilang ito ang tamang version, the other is hindi. Preferences po tawag natin doon. So, you could use your version kasi ang lahat-lahat aside from the Greek kung sa New Testament tayo, those are all translations lang naman eh. 
So, if you really want to get back, kung gusto mo malaman yung, yung totoo, yung, yung pakahulugan nito, go back to the original. Go back ka doon sa, sa Greek kasi hindi naman nagbabago ang Greek na to. Ang iba naman, because it is called Holy Bible, umahabot sa salitang Bibliolatry. Ang Bibliolatry comes from two words, Biblion at saka Latrio. Ito namang Bibliolatry, ayon dito, kinuha natin ang, ang, ang definition niya, is the combination of the words Bible and idolatry, Latrio, to praise or to worship. As such, it is defined as worship of the Bible. There are some na hindi nila matanggap talaga na ang, ang, ang hawak-hawak nila na aklat because may tatak doon na Holy Bible that should be considered holy. So, bawal sulatan yung iba, bawal matiklo, bawal upuan, bawal kung saan saan nilalagay. At hindi rin matanggap ng iba na sa New Age natin, sa bagong panahon natin, hindi nila matanggap yung mga Bible apps. So, when you go to church, kailangan pa rin bitbit mo yung Bible mo. Kasi Bible nga, book. Eh, yan naman, uh, hawak mo. So, cellphone, o di kaya laptop. So, hindi nila matanggap na kagaya na ginagawa natin ngayon, yung presentation natin ay nakaganito or projector or some other means na electronic. So, kung titignan nyo maigi and you want to be, um, natawag natin doon, maging tactical ka dito, then you'll be thinking, oh, oo oh, nga naman, no? kasi ang Bible is considered book. So, hindi naman book yung ginagawa mo. So, hindi na tama yan. Nasa sa inyo. Okay? I will leave it of that. Hey, the nice thing that we studied last time is that how we got the Bible names. The books of the Bible. Ang sabi nga natin, there are three, pero ang, ang ginawa ko, there are four. It depends on the content, yung nilalaman, pwedeng gawin, gamitin yun, the author or the writer, pwedeng gamitin yun, the addressee or yung recipient of the letter. Okay? And last but not least, ay yung main character, kagaya na lang lang Ruth at saka ng kay Esther. Hindi po silang sumulat noon, pero sila yung character na main doon sa mga aklat na ito, and kaya ipinangalan sa kanila ang dalawang bahagi ng aklat ng Biblia na to. Okay? The next one, paano ba natin nakuha yung names of the books of the Bible? Again, sa content, sa nilalaman, what it is, what it's all about, and siya. Kagaya ng Genesis. Genesis comes from the term gene. Yung galing doon yung salita natin, genealogy. Okay? Yung pinanggalingan. Kaya nga, ang Genesis, makikita natin sa book of Genesis ay, ito yung book of beginnings. Ito yung beginning of life, beginning of the universe, beginning of sin, beginning of family, beginning of race, lahat, lahat. Kapag gusto mo makita yung beginning, punta ka sa aklat ng Genesis. Okay? Ang susunod doon ay yung Exodus. Tawag natin doon yung Ekhodos. Yung Ek is out of, sa Greek, ang yung Hodos, wherein nang galing yung salita nating odometer. Yan. Yan. Yung nasa sasakyan nyo, yung kilometer doon na sinasabi niya, that's your odometer. Ang odometer mo comes from the word Hodos. Yan. So, ang Exodus or Ekhodos is literally out way or way out. Kaya it talks about yung mula doon sa pagkakaalipin ng mga Israelites from Egypt on their way out, going to the promised land. Iyan po ang Exodus. Okay? The Leviticus, galing doon sa salitang Levi o Levi, tribe, one of the 12 tribes. Kaya it all pertains concerning the tribe of Levi being the priestly tribe at ang mga bagay-bagay na nandun doon ay mga gawain ng mga Levites. Okay? Ang sunod ay yung numbers. That's it. <laughs> Kung ano sinasabi niya, numbers. So, it's a book of numbers. From Egypt to the desert, binilang lahat-lahat ng mga yon. So, andun doon yung mga numbers nila. Pero may mga bagay-bagay din na magaganda sa numbers. We will get there when we get there. Okay? So, ang Deuteronomy is that Deo or Dai, yung Daikot, Monokot, di ba? Malala natin sa ating mga mga uh, elementary days. So, yung Deo, yung pangalawa. Second or twice. So, yung Nomos naman, from Deo, tapos Nomos, is a law. Ito yung pangalawang pagbibigay para sa mga bagong henerasyon. Ibinigay muli, pinaalala muli ng Diyos ano yung kanyang mga utos. Kaya ang sabi nga natin, ito yung 
second giving of the law kung totoo sin, okay? That's Deuteronomy. Deuteronomos, okay? Uh, napakalaki ng similarity niya sa Exodus, lalo tigit ang Exodus 20, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, chapter 5, yung giving of the law, makikita ulit natin doon. Okay? When we've got time, we'll go back to that. So, how about the others? Madali na lang po. Psalms. Alam na naman natin ang Psalms. Uh, yung mga bagay-bagay na uh, gamit natin for, for music intended to be sung. Yung Proverbs, wise sayings. Yung Ecclesiastes. Okay? Uh, the preacher, Kohilat. Okay? Yung Songs of Solomon or Song of Songs. Uh, ito siya yung mga sinulat ni ni King Solomon. Lamentations. Okay? Sinama natin dyan pang-anim. Yung Lamentations ni Jeremiah. When he saw what will happen, uh, tumangis talaga si Jeremiah. Okay? The Acts. Pasok natin yung agad New Testament kasi ang gospel, madali lang naman. Gospel is good news. It talks about the life of Jesus. Uh, yung Acts na lang is the history natin. Acts of the Apostles na nakasulat sa ilan. Pero papansinin natin, ang ando dun lang, first few chapters is John and Peter. Ang sumunod doon is ando dun lang si Apostle Paul. And the last but not least, yung Apocalypse or yung the book of Revelation. Okay? So let's go over and that is for our review muna. Let's go over now how we got the Bible. Paano nga ba tayo nagkaroon ng Biblia? Paano ba nakarating sa atin ang Biblia? How we got the Bible? The truth is, maa-appreciate natin ang pagkakaroon natin ng Biblia kung alam natin saan nang galing. Kung alam natin ano ang pinagdaanan, kung alam natin ang mga bagay-bagay na nangyari bago nakarating sa atin the Bible in its completion, in its complete form, in 66 books as it is, then we will appreciate really the Bible. Just like our freedom. We will appreciate our freedom if we know how our forefathers, our ancestors fight for that na magkaminsan taken for granted. Sa bagay, ganoon din ang feeling natin. With lahat-lahat ng mga technology na meron tayo, isang click lang yan. But, paano nga ba napunta, napasa atin ang Biblia? Paano nga ba nagkaroon tayo ng ganito? The Holy Bible. Okay? So, first and foremost, hindi siya dumating na 66 books na nakakumpile na nakagaya nito. What we have are Siguro nakakapagod no, ano, kung yung scroll pa, uh, sa, sa Hebrew, scroll siya lagi. Sa, sa naka, nakasulat siya, bawat aklat niyan or yung ilang scrolls kaya meron ng Isaiah. So these things are, think with me if you will. Yung writing materials ng Biblia natin is that it came from, yung unang ginamit nila, it came from papyrus. Ito marami sa Egypt, ito marami doon dahil malapit sa, sa, sa ilog. So marami ang papyrus. This, these are papyrus plants. At ang papyrus plants na yan, pagka pinagsama-sama sila para ilagagan ganon, i, i, pagsama-samahin, doon sila sumusulat on that. So, ang first na writing material para sa Biblia natin, papyrus ang ginamit. Papiray. Yun nga lang, Nagiging brittle ito pagka nagtagal and it crumbles easily. Tapos natatanggal din na nagkakawatak-watak sila. So, hindi gaanong nagtagal ang mga sinulat doon sa papyrus. Okay? The next one is the vellum kung tawagin natin. Ang vellum naman is made out of animal hide or animal skin. Ang mga vellum na ito, ito yung ginamit nila sa mga parchment or yung ginamit nila sa mga scrolls kagaya nito. Yun nga lang, mga vellum, they're heavy, burdensome, at saka expensive. Mahirap gumawa, mahirap magkaroon nito. The truth is, mayroon tayong Ephraimi Codex Ephraimi Rescriptos na magpapatunay kung bakit ang, ang mga scroll na ganito or yung vellum na kagaya nito na itong si Father Ephraimi. Napansin nila that yung kanyang sermon isinulat niya over doon sa 
Bible or book of, I think it was Isaiah, na ang ginawa ng, ng paring ito, binura niya yung una kasi nga siguro sa hirap ng pagkakaroon natin ng writing materials. And then he wrote over it. May mga pictures po ito kung gusto nyo marapatin. Tinan po ninyo yung Codex, Codex Ephraini Rescriptos. Okay? So we have extant, meron tayong mga manuscripts na extant, na nananatili hanggang ngayon. Yung four codices kung tawagin natin, yung Codex Vaticanos, of course, nasa Vatican yan, Codex Sinaiticos, ito yung tinatawag natin noon na Dead Sea Scrolls. Ang background nito ay um, nakita ito doon sa mga Qumran uh, communities sa Dead Sea. At madami ito, marami mga scrolls. Pero history or story says that na yung iba, dahil malamig, pinanggatong. Okay? Pero mabuti na lang na-preserve yung iba. And find out that marami doon sa Codex Sinaiticos are writings o scroll ni Isaiah. Okay? The Codex Alexandrinos, ito nasa Egypt. And then the Codex Ephraim Rescriptus, yung sinasabi ko kanina, na binura niya yung, yung scriptures and then isinulad ng paring ito yung kanyang mensahe over it. Okay? Mayroon din tayong na-preserve na papyrus, yung Chester B.T. Papyri na ginagamit ngayon na isa sa mga sources din ng ating mga nagsulat ng, ng bagong tipan. And then, Codex Bizay. Okay? So, having said that, alam natin na hindi basta-basta na nasulat. So, very cumbersome sa atin kung nanatiling scrolls. Napakahirap sa atin. Unlike ngayon, na kahit saan, kahit ilang versions meron tayo, kahit anong mga translations, kahit anong mga lingwahe o dialects, we can have that. And we thank God for that. Napadali ang pag-aaral natin. But would you believe that there was a time in our history that owning and reading a Bible is unlawful? It has been forbidden. Ang tawag na nila doon, Dark Ages. Uh, kinuha ko ito kanina. And it says, during the Dark Ages, at nagbigay siya ng timeline niya, that is 500 to 1,580, the Christian Church of Rome, yan, Christian Church of Rome, the Church of Rome burned Bibles along with their owners. Napakasakit tingnan nito. Samantalang tayo ngayon, we just take the Bible and reading the Bible and owning the Bible for granted. There was a time in our history that reading it is considered na isang violation. This was during the time we're in, nag-peak yung church. At yung church has the sole authority. Siya lang yung pwedeng magsabi, pwedeng magpaliwanag. He is the source of truth. Okay? So, anyone who contradicts the teaching of the church becomes the enemy of the church and the enemy of the state. At alam nyo, ang mga nang natatawag na enemy of the church are considered heretics or infidels. At ang mga heretics na ito, ang accusation sa kanila magkaminsan ay either they practice sorcery or witchcraft at ah, ang daming mga movies, ano? We're in, anyone who does not agree with the church is considered a sorcerer or a witchcraft and they are burned at stake. Just imagine that. So, marami sa mga tao noong unang panahon talaga kasi hindi lang sumang-ayon sa turo ng church were burned at stake because they were considered heretics, infidels, sorcerers, practicing witchcraft, magic. Yun ang mga accusations ng church. Para maintindihan natin what heresy means, sabi niya, a heresy is a belief or opinion contrary to the orthodox religious. Yung paniniwala ng church. The church during those times becomes so corrupt. At nakita din nila that the church Lumaki siya ng lumaki, kinuha niya ang lahat ng mga properties at maraming mga properties. And here's the thing also, even dito sa Pilipinas nakarating ang ganong 
style ang ganung ugali. Just think with me and just think ano ang pananang palataya ka. Saan mo makikita ano o, oh, ganito ang tanong, ano ang nasa tapat ng munisipyo? Tayo mga Pilipino. Okay? Sige, balikan mo. Think back. Huwag lang yung mga modern ngayon kasi nalalay tayo. Think back. Balik tayo sa mga provinces. Magkikita mo yung mga prime lots. Munisipyo sa harap, anong nasa katapat niya? Church. Anong tabi niya? Plaza. Anong mga susunod doon? Yung mga bagay-bagay. Prime lots. Uh, sinabi ko lang yung 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 obvious and then schools na pag-aari din ng church or that is being run by the church so ang church nagkaroon siya tuloy ng exclusive right na lahat ng truth emanates or comes from them at ang mga ano mang sabihin ng bishop ano mang sabihin ng priests ano mang sabihin ng mga ng mga nasa church yun ang dapat paniwalaan at yan ang isa ding bagay na inayawan o kinontra ng no limit ang hiri ng, ni, ni, ni Dr. Jose Rizal. We will we'll deal with that later. So, ang nangyayari is that, remember, 500 to 1,580, nagpapadala ang church mula sa Roma. Nagpapadala siya ng kanyang mga papunta doon sa promised land para bawiin ang promised land. Nagpapadala siya ng mga crusaders kung tawagin. And these crusaders, when they go from there, from Europe, pupunta sila ng Middle East, and when they go back, itong mga crusaders, habang nasa Middle East sila, na expose din naman sila sa mga writings ng mga philosophers, like Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. And they bring those things back doon naman sa Europe, doon naman sa cradle, from the cradle of civilization, doon naman sila babalik ngayon sa sentro ng Christendom because Rome is the center of the Christendom at this time. Ang nangyayari tuloy is that hindi nagiging exclusive yung church sa faith. Sinasabi na tuloy ng mga tao, okay, let's use reason. Gamitin natin yung sinasabi ni ng mga uh, uh, Greek philosophers. Sinasabi ni Protagora, sinasabi ni Socrates, ni Plato, ni Aristotle, and some other writers or some other philosophers. Because of this, nagkakaroon ng matinding struggle, away, kung tutusin. Naghigpit ang church at lahat-lahat na mag-upos ng kanilang katuruan para ipakita lang na sila yung power They were in the mat state. It was during this time, nung kasagsagan na talaga, early 1400s, 14th century, and 1600 na ang Renaissance, okay? It was during those times na nagkakaroon na ng idea ang mga tao na hindi sapat ang church. Hindi sapat yung sinasabi ng church. Hindi sapat yung mga sinasabi nila. At ito yung heliocentric na nilabas ni Nicholas Copernicus. Si, si Copernicus, during the time of Renaissance, he challenged the idea that the earth is the center of the universe. Ah, oh, bumalik ang mga, ang mga bishops. Sinabi nila, no, this, the earth is the center of the universe. Pero para kay Copernicus, ang sabi niya, no, the sun is the center of the universe and we revolve around the sun. Yun ang isa sa mga issue na talaga namang nagpaisip sa lahat-lahat. At yun ang isa sa mga issue kasi ang thinking ng, 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 ng mga bishops at ng mga, ng mga uh, church leaders, nag-stick sila masyado doon sa sinasabi na, ng, ng Bible na hindi magmumove. Iba yung pagkakaintindi nila. And much more, during those times, kailan dumating si Magellan sa atin? 15th or 16th century. 14th century, 16th. March 16, 1521. Ang sabi ni Ferdinand Magellan at the time, ha, ang sabi niya, pupunta ako ng east. Pupunta ako doon sa east by going west. 
Ah, sabi sa kanya noong time na yon no, 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 you can go to the east by going west. Ang east doon, ang west dito. How could you go? Ang sabi niya, isi-circumnavigate ko. Patutunayan niya na ang mundo ay bilog. Ang pananaw noong mga panahon na yon ang mundo ay flat. Dagdag tayo. There was this invention by this guy named Galileo Galilei. The inventor of telescope. Nakita niya na may movement ang mga stars. And he made lahat ng mga nakikita niya, sinusulat niya yan. At ito si Galileo, because of the thing that he has, alam niyo ba na hinuli siya. And may mga bagay-bagay, so many things na nag-transpire doon. Um, it was even bawal pa uh, na makita ka lang na sumilip ka doon sa sa telescope ni ni Galileo at sasabihin mm, isa ka na rin sa mga heretic 1400s then it yung rise of protestantism hindi na rin nila kayang um uh, din nila matiis yung corruption na nangyayari hindi na rin nila kayang matiis yung teachings na na faith apart from reason. Nagkaroon nga ng faith and reason, pinagsama na yon uh, Ando dun yung mga sina Anselm. Ando dun yung mga church uh, leaders. Na um, the billowing of the ox, sina Thomas Aquinas. Na pinaghahalo nila ang faith at saka reason is slowly nag-break-break ang Roman Catholicism at this time. And nag-rise din from their own ranks. Lumabas ito. Isa sa mga nagngangalang Martin Luther na isinulat niya yung kanyang thesis doon mismo sa pintuan ng uh, Vatican. So, nakakatuwa na mapansin na, hey, from their own ranks. At doon nag-rise ang protestantism. Doon nag-umpisa. Inilagay ko lang yung impact on illustrados. Maalala nyo, dito sa Pilipinas during those times also, bawal tayong magbasa ng Bible natin. Had it not been lumabas si Dr. Jose Rizal, he was shocked pagdating niya ng Euro. Kasi dito sa Pilipinas, talagang forbidden ang mga bagay-bagay na to. Bawal nga magsalita against the church. Nagulat siya pagdating niya doon 1800s. Because of the things that are going on, Protestantism on the rise, yung Renaissance on the rise, nagulat siya. Kaya nga, kung hindi niya nabasa ang Bible, wala sanang no limit ang here. Kasi, from him alone, from him, sinabi niyang kinuha niya yung Touch Me Not, na title ng kanyang No Limit Ang Hari from the Bible itself. Di ba? Katatungan yan. One more thing, this guy, 1494-1536, ang kanyang pangalan ay William Tyndale. Okay? Si William Tyndale, 1439, nilagay ko 36 lang. Uh, si William Tyndale, siya yung naging daan para nagkaroon tayo ng Bible. Why? Because he translated the Bible into English from Hebrew and Greek. Oo, meron na tayong Latin Vulgate ni Jerome. Meron na yung translation from Hebrew to Latin. Translate na ni Jerome yan. Pero this guy translated it, si Tyndale, translate niya from Hebrew and Greek sa English upang maintindihan ng mga nandodon sa Europe. Interesting enough, He was the first who called, who used the name Jehovah. Yung God na ginagamit doon sa, sa Lomang Tipan. He was the first to use Jehovah. At yan nag-stick na nanatiling name or isa sa mga familia na katawagan. Okay? In all of this, Si William Tyndale was condemned as a heretic and he was executed by strangulation. Noong 
he was executed. Nakakatuwa. Yung kanyang arrest was ordered by Henry VIII. Pero, the same Henry VIII ang idinalangin ni William Tyndale nung i-execute siya. Ang sabi ni William is that Lord open the King of England's eyes. Ang tama. Two years after that, it really opened the eyes of Henry VIII. Or two years prior, si Henry VIII umaklas din siya eh. Si Henry VIII inestablish niya ang Church of England. Yung tawag natin na Anglican Church sa ngayon. Pero naibalik yan. And here is a picture of uh, Tyndale being executed talaga sa, sa, sa public. Ano? Uh, we thank God for giving us people like Tyndale. Okay? So, how we got the Bible? How was it written? Madali ko na lang pong gawin ito at sa madalian. Kailangan na maintindihan natin sa isang oral tsaka oral society. Okay? That yung mga bagay-bagay na alam nung mga una ipinapass on through oral. Wala mo na nagsusulat. It is passed down tradition accurately through the word of mouth. Ang iba through songs. Nagkaroon na ito ng experiment ang Duke University. 1870, 1930, 1950. At totoo nga, kaya ipass. Accurate yung from one generation to the next. Kagaya din natin, mga kwento ng mga lulut lola. Okay? Uh, hindi na mararanasan ng mga kabataan siguro ngayon, ng mga millennials. Ano? Yet, hindi lahat-lahat ng stories ay nasusulat. Ang iba doon ay selective. So, how was it written? Bakit at paano nasulat ang, ang mga nilalaman ng Bible natin? I'll give, be giving you some text and then yan po ang magiging last na part na presentation natin. Okay? We'll use John 20, 30 and 31. Listen to John 20, 30 and 31. It says, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of His disciples which are not recorded in this book. Anong sabi natin? Selective. Hindi lahat-lahat ng ginawa ay sinulat dito. Sa kanyang chapter 19, verse 20, or chapter 21, mag- magkikita natin next week kung nalang present ang kanyang sinabi pa doon is, Opinion ni John that if everything will be written, the whole world will not be able. <laughs> Gano'ng kadami? Buong mundo, hindi niya kayang isulat lahat-lahat na ginawa. Uh, that's hyperbole. Ano? So, sobra na yun. But, ang sabi niya, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing in Him, you may have life in His name. Kaya nga, makikita natin, the writers of the New Testament or the writers of the Bible were selective. And then, the writers were also purposive. Selective, not all were written. Purposive, these are written that you may believe. Okay? Another one. Yung sumulat naman, si Dr. Lucas, Dr. Luke, physician. Sabi ni Dr. Luke, sa Luke chapter 1, 1 through 4, Many have undertaken to draw up an account on the things that have been fulfilled among us. Tanggap niya, marami talaga yung nagsulat. Just as they were handed down to us. Remember yung sinabi kong yung oral tradition? Paano nakarating nung wala pang nagsusulat? Oral. Paano ba nangyari ito? Paano ba yung account doon? Ito, oral tradition. Handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses. Yung mga nakakita. Paano mo nakita? Just like Mark. Si Mark, ang kanyang source ng kanyang sinulat ng gospel ng Mark is Peter. Hindi nagsulat si Peter ng kanyang gospel, but Mark did. Pero ang kanyang source, yung eyewitness doon, bagamat ando doon din si John Mark at that time, pero ang kanyang source basically is Peter. Okay? Ang sabi niya, just as they were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Pansin niyo, servants of the word, hindi servants of the Lord ang ginamit niya. There, there. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. So, Oral tradition. Therefore, 
since I myself have carefully investigated, and doon yung mga wordings ha, he carefully investigated everything from the beginning para makapagsulat siya ng isang magandang gospel. Ginawa niya ito, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, Theophilus. Yung kanyang recipient na si Theophilus, ang sabi ni Dr. Lucas ay, he is writing an orderly account on the things that have been fulfilled among us. And then yung purpose pa rin. So that, ang sabi ni, ni, ni Luke, you may know the certainty of the things you have been told. Para makatiyak ka na hindi heresy ang mga naririnig mo, hindi kwento-kwento lang, kundi tiyak because he has undertaken, he has searched, carefully investigated, and that it came from the eyewitnesses first, no? Na mga sources. And again, doon sa kanyang second book, the book of Acts, sinabi na naman niya to, in my former book, Theophilus, so, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Yan yang gospel. Pero this time, sabi niya, until the day he was taken up to heaven. This time, after suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. This, in Acts, itinuloy niya. Dahil ano nga ba yung nangyari mula doon sa ginawa ni Jesus hanggang sa ascension. And after that, ang ginawa niya naman sa Acts is, anong nangyari after the ascension? Anong nangyari sa mga disciples? Anong nangyari sa mga alagad? Two more verse, and I'm done. Ito siya naman ang sabi ni Paul. Apostle Paul from, uh, Apostle Peter from Second Peter chapter 1, 20 and 21. Ang sabi niya, above all you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Ito yung inspiration na tinatawag. Men, or they, the writers, were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The same thing sinabi ni Pedro, sa mga writings ni Paul. Concerning Paul, he said, he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them on these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand. Tanggap natin yan, may mga mahihirap talaga ipaliwanan din, no? Which ignorant and unstable people, unstable people distort as they do to other scriptures to their own destruction. Kaya nga, pinag-iingat tayo habang nag-aaral, ha? Um, reading the Bible for what's worth. When we read the Bible, sana we have, we can understand it at huwag natin i-distort, huwag natin baguhin ang mensahe niya, kundi ano ba talaga ang sinasabi dito? So, ang mga writers natin, they practice this. They practice diligence in researching sa kanilang mga isusulat. Hindi sila opinionated. According to Peter, it is not the prophet's own interpretation. They were purposeful, or purposeful in, in their writing. My purpose talaga, that you may believe, that you will know the certainty of the things. Ano ba mga purpose? Kaya nga, sa lahat-lahat ng pag-aaral natin, sa lahat-lahat ng mga books, makikita mo kagad-agad, ano ang purpose? Ano ang theme? Ano yung, yung underlying principle ng isang writer nito nung sinulat niya? Anong purpose ni Matthew? Anong purpose ni Mark? Anong purpose ni Luke? Ni John? Meron po ang mga yan. And we can see that as we go along. And then yung last but not least, yung salitang inspired by God. Yung inspired ay in, spiro lang yan. And that is, that means God breath. And this is my last text. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all scripture is God breath, inspired ang ginamit doon sa iba. And is useful for teaching, ginagawa ko, open Bible study natin, online Bible study natin. For rebuking, pagka hindi tama, we are being rebuked. For correcting, pagka mali, kung tinuturo mo, you'll be corrected. Ano lang ba dapat? 
and then for training in righteousness. Ang kanyang purpose, rightness. Para maging uh, right, matuwid. Sa 17, he says, so that the man of God, tayo, may be thoroughly equipped. Wala ka nang hahanapin pa. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hanggang dito po muna ang ating pag-aaral. I've had 45 minutes now, 43 minutes. So, I'll stop it here. Pero, here's the thing. Kung mayroon po kayong mga katanungan, PM me or... I will answer them. Try to answer them. Pagka nag-PM po kayo, or you can call me. Pero for your consideration, para next week po, itong dapat natanungin nyo sa inyong sarili. Can we really rely or trust the Bible? Or, can we understand the Bible? Kasi sinabi na kanina sa nabasa natin, 2 si Peter, di ba? That they are hard to understand. They are. Hindi naman lahat-lahat eh. Isa talaga ito sa mga pinag-uusapan, is the Bible free from contradictions? Baka naman hindi. Tapos nagsabi pa ako kanina, no? Uh, when contradictions, when disagreements, mananadili ang Bible to be true ang opinion natin ang mali. Okay? So, let me just leave you with that. Alam ko may marami pa kayong mga tanong, yung mga what ifs, but let's get there when we get there. Okay? So, sa papasalamatan ko po ang bawat isa. At huwag natin alisin yung ating prevailing at saka pervading principle ng pag-aaral ng OBS Online Bible Study is that reading the Bible for what's worth. Papasalamat ako sa inyo, sa inyong pagsama sa akin. Again, thank you so much dito sa ating OBS Online Bible Study. And I will be posting next time kung kailan ang susunod po natin na schedule. So, good review, good refresh, why we believe what we believe how we got the Bible, and then reading the Bible for all its worth. Maraming, maraming salamat po muli ang inyong lingkod, Jose Ronevoy Perez Carriaga po.